everybody. Hi, welcome. Hello, Ed Puzzlers. And yes, in the spirit of Valentine's Day, I want you to know that I will always, always love you. I love you for your enthusiasm. I love you for your drive. And especially I love you for showing up always and being a part of our Ed Puzzle Live community. So thank you for that. I'm Stephanie from the Ed Puzzle Community Engagement Team. We are so grateful that you're here spending time with us as we continue our mission to spotlight and share all of the greatest, greatest, coolest instructional ideas with our educator community. And by popular demand, we are now offering certificates of attendance to you for participating tonight. Just hang in until the end and we will share the deets on that. Our chat is open. I see lots of you here already. So while you're settling in, take some time to tell everyone a little bit about yourself, like what you teach, where you're from, and because... It's Valentine's Day, hooray, or close to. Um, share your favorite love song. Be sure you drop that too in the chat. We want to make sure that we know what you're listening to and what you like to say for Valentine's Day. Also, during our discussion tonight, please feel free to ask our, quest ask our guests and each other questions, share your own stories, um, express your aha moments. And if you're evangelizing this event, on social media, don't forget to use the hashtag EdPuzzleLive. With that said, let's say hello to my very funny Valentines, tonight's co-hosts, Kate and Maho. Hello, friends. Hi, Hi Valentines. Valentine's. How's it Hello. going, Steph? I'm good. All right. Your favorite Valen your favorite love song. Favorite I love song. Say my favorite Valentine. I have to pick it from the two of you. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. I am a Swifty. Oh, yeah. I'm a yeah. Swifty. I knew that was coming. I have to say right now that Lavender Haze is. Okay, good, good. good. Yeah. Mama, yeah. what about you? Okay, so since we are here to also promote the amazing Spanish speaking um, singers. And community, <laughs> um, yep. If you haven't heard him, you, you need to do it. But his name is Luis Miguel. Yes. And That's my amazing. favorite love song is one of his called The Glory Is You, but in Spanish, La Gloria Eres Tú. Oh. I love it. Oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. And if you need some translation, I can definitely help. Well, I know what we're listening to tomorrow. Yes. Mine is a, mine's an oldie but a goodie. It's it's the Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell version of "Ain't No Mountain High Enough." Mm. Love, love it. Nick, yes. that's a classic. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's a classic, and I do. I love it lots. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so what do you think? Ready to get started? Oh my gosh, girls, I'm so excited. So let's jump right in. So last month, we explored workflows to shift learning from teacher to student. This month, we're eyeballing some practical lesson frameworks to make that happen. We've got Edu Protocol experts John and Adam joining us to demonstrate what Edu Protocols are and how they work. Let's bring them in. Okay, so John. And John is the, he is created, he's the co-creator, excuse me, of Edu Protocols. He describes himself as a, quote, formally disgruntled student. Don't they always make the best teachers? <laughs> always. Um, and although he had no intention of teaching, he became one. Um, it turns out that he transformed his, his dissatisfaction into a method to make learning more fun and teachers' jobs way easier. John's been recognized as a County Teacher of the Year and a 20 to Watch Educator. He's also been named a Top 100 Influencer. And the Edu Protocols book series had sold nearly 50,000 copies worldwide. Wow. Now, his buddy, Adam, um, I discovered Adam on Twitter. It, if When you follow, I'm begging you to follow his Twitter account because he's got the best blog. He literally legit posts what he taught that week. He's like giving away lesson plans. So his passion is for developing student-centered classrooms focused around critical thinking, creative thinking, collaboration, and communication. Um, you, and if, like I said, if you follow him on Twitter or read his blog, you know that this is entirely the truth. 
He is the co-author of the social studies version of edu, of edu protocols. He's currently an eighth grade social studies teacher, recognized as the 2023 Ohio District 5 Teacher of the Year and the 2022 Ohio Council for Social Studies Middle School Teacher of the Year. Come on in, guys. Yay! Hi, Hi. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are not going to ignore the blue um, headphones if you'd like to share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're my daughter's headphones. I needed headphones. I, I think they go great. Uh, I think you can buy those at at Claire's, right? The earring place. You can get them at Probably. Claire's. Dude, the base on these is actually pretty good. They're pretty good. It's all about that base. Yes. Okay. So um, John is originally from Northern California? Northern Central, yeah. Depends okay. on where you and, put the line. Okay. And as you can tell from Adam's background, he is from New England, as you can tell now. Oh, come on. <laughs> Who day? Who day? Adam? Right. Who day? Uh, he's a Philadelphia guy, I heard. <laughs> I'm not watching that Super Bowl, John. <laughs> You're going to spend right. the whole afternoon angrily eating Skyline Chili, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, Skyline. there's something we can't agree on because I'm Gold Star. <laughs> oh, you're Gold Star? Come on, Kate. I know. I thought we were really lining oh. up. <laughs> love, love, love Skyline. All right. But enough about us because everybody came here to see you guys. All right. So first question we always ask, we always want everyone's origin story. So John, this is for you. What prompted the invention yeah. of edu protocols? As a lot of people, when I meet them, uh, like, what is it? So talk about it for us. So I was sitting at my desk on a Friday night in 1999, and there were actually 1,500 papers to grade. And I was like, I can't do this for 30 years. I need to really start not thinking like a teacher. And like you guys mentioned, the, the formerly disgruntled student, I didn't really like school. I didn't hate it. It was just boring. Yeah. I, I was constantly thinking about other things during school. And that was my disgruntlement. So I started really looking at systems thinking. And um, I did a little uh, graduate assistant football coaching at Fresno State, which is not like high school football coaching. It's very technical. And I started using those feedback loops that I learned about and uh, our coach had taught us about what I later learned was the Ebbinghaus effect and uh, which also is also called the forgetting curve. And so basically for me, it was just a dissatisfaction with the grading and lesson planning part of teaching. I always loved the kids and I always loved hanging out and I always loved the work of the thing, but I was losing nights and weekends to grading and I knew that scantrons weren't going to get the job done. So I started just kind of going in my little science lab and trying things out. So why don't you, again, for people who are not familiar with the term edu protocol, if you could kind of go ahead and explain yeah. how that works. You, I right. So like, um, those slides to share with yeah. us. Yeah. You got it. Let's hit. Thanks. Let me, we got those. So, so I just uh, like, so I started teaching video. I've been teaching video in particular for a long time. And I don't know if you guys can see the little uh, icon there, but I've been teaching video since we, we were excited to make video CDs, <laughs> which is what you did before you could burn a DVD. Like we're really yeah. old school. Yeah. And so kind of staying with the edge of protocols piece before the next slide. So like the first one for me was uh, classically, we're going to teach, if we do the parts of speech, which is how a lot of classes start their ELA, we're going to do nouns for a week and verbs for a week and adjectives for a week. And what's happening from a technical sense is we're constantly asking kids to lose the short-term memory of verbs and replace it with short-term memory on prepositions. And so we're only working in the short-term memory. So one of the first protocols was called the eight parts of speech. And we do all eight parts of speech and one sitting. And that way we're locking in eight parts as a total concept, not just one at a time. And then instead of doing nouns for a week, the kids can do nouns, verbs, adjectives, all eight parts of speech for four weeks. And now you're spending uh, like uh, what 300% more time on task, plus you're using them all together. So and you're constantly scaffolding, got, going back and re constantly know. scaffolding. And then 
back in the old days, I literally, this is going to crack Kate up. I would literally have to get national geographics and cut funny pictures out and scan them in. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't have fail army yet or memes or gifts. Like I had to make my own junk in those days for the kids to laugh at. <laughs> and so now, now I can show them a short TikTok to get them in the mood to write, or I can have a meme or a GIF. And then there used to be this thing called Vine. Is anybody old enough to remember Vines? Which right? So a Vine was basically a five-second video, and that taught me a lot in my English classroom because as an ELA teacher, what happens is we we tend to think that the five paragraph essay is the paragon of writing and so then we think if we do a lot of five paragraph essays the kids will get better at writing but guess what if you can't make one good paragraph doing four more does not help and yet it creates four times more work for me so i started really focusing on let's write better paragraphs and it turns out to write better paragraphs you have, have to write better sentences and so vines really helped me as a video teacher think about in my video class, because I taught video too, we would start the first day of video class with my freshman and I would go, your first video is due today. And they would be like, what? And I would go, it can only be five seconds long. And they're like, what? And I go, don't you like Vine? And they're like, oh, yeah. And I go, we're yeah. not going to make a script. Just grab a Vine that you can copy and copy it. And I just want to see if you can copy it. And so like my kids that, started I making. Like I'm sorry. I love that shift in mentality. Oh, yeah. That it yeah. doesn't so have instead to be your crazy. First video is done in, at Halloween. Start writing a script because, A, they're not funny. The scripts are not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, let's not write a script and let's just save everybody the trouble. So now it was, I want you guys to get your phones out. I want you to find a vine. I want you to copy the vine with your friends. You can go outside. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And so I set this tempo of a video a day. Boom, boom. And then my ELA teacher side was like, oh, what if we just did a paragraph a day instead of five paragraphs a week? That little shift just really started blowing minds. So edge protocols are a new mindset, right? And they're not, not a slide deck. So they're like, people tend to think of them as, oh, if I do these slides, it's, if you have a new mindset, you can have new results. And that's really the big idea. And so we're into fast feedback. I talked about the Ebbinghaus effect, the forgetting curve. You don't really start moving things into long-term memory until the fourth repetition. So what I do is instead of giving kids and again, great story. You'll love this one, Stephanie. I have my freshman, yeah. sorry, my sophomore English class. And I go, hey, you guys, there's an essay due next week. And they're like, ah. Oh. And I go, but I'm just going to make it due at the end of the class period. You've got 23 minutes. And they're like, what? <laughs> what? what? And I go, let's be honest. If it's due next week, when are you going to do it? And Ezra goes, um, Wednesday night. And I go, so? <laughs> yeah. Uh, why am I giving you six days to do nothing? And then I go, hey, uh, Justin, how long are you going to spend Frankensteining that essay together from otherpeople'spapers.com? And he's like, Dah, about 20 minutes. And I go, you have 20 minutes right now. Put your pink headphones on, start writing. I'll come in around and look over your shoulder. If you will write continuously from now until the bell with your headphones on, you'll get a, an A for the day. And they're like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What are we writing about? Anything you want. So it moved into right now, feedback now, positive interchange about writing right now. I don't care how long it is. It might be just one really good paragraph. And it turned out that, that it just changed the energy in the classroom. And let's think about it this way, you guys. This is a video slide, uh, a video tie-in again. Most of your favorite Warner Brothers cartoons are 11 to 13 minutes. Um, a TED Talk, 17 minutes. So part of the protocol's mindset is quicker cycles, more repetitions. Quicker cycles, more repetitions. And then the, the shorter stuff also makes my grading quicker because I can go, that's good. That's not good. And with the first district that I worked in, I had kids bringing me, I want you guys to think about this, five-page book report. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh, Dude, nobody wants to read that. 
the former English Nobody teacher wants to read that. just fell on the floor. Yeah, Kate and I yeah. were both English teachers. Here, I know what it's like taking all those and here, books. And here's what it sounds like. This is a good book. I liked this book. Uh, you should read this book. This book should be in our library. My brother read this book in your class two years ago. Uh, this book's available on Amazon. Bro, I don't need that. Yeah. Let's just get to it. Somebody wanted but so then. If you can't do it in five sentences, it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better in five pages. Yeah. yeah. So, and then the tie in there for the Ed Puzzle piece is not waiting for a special occasion. And I see a lot of teachers doing this in a lot of platforms. Oh, we do that. We love this tool for that project. We love this tool for that project. So what well, if you could drop to this? Well, we'll wait till Friday, right? right. Yeah. We'll wait, or, or even the worst one, my kryptonite. We'll wait till fall. If you wait till fall, you won't know what you're doing in the fall. Start getting messy right now. Start figuring it out now. So imagine this, giving kids a TV commercial and let's go somebody wanted but so then. So literally yeah. you got 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. And then you let that video play for eight seconds. Somebody, boom. And then you go a little farther and you go, wanted, boom. And you're scaffolding like crazy. And since they're watching the TV commercial, they're having a good old time. So um, a little bit more about protocols and as a workflow, because I want to give Adam a lot of airtime. This is what we tend to do in school. We do, I'm going to talk for a while, and then I'm going to give you guys an assignment. And again, I, I might say something like this. Hey, if you finish before the bell rings, you don't have homework. And if you, if you do that to 11-year-old Adam and John, we're like, hey, we're talking about Minecraft. I didn't even hear you right now. And I'm not going to do it this homework. So, and then the feedback might be later. So you're destroying that feedback loop for the kids. Yeah. Oh, destroying is probably not the best word. Interdicting. Okay. But this is what it looks like in protocols. Here's a video. It's only 30 seconds. Somebody wanted but so then. Let's go. That generates feedback. I can go, you guys are really bad at this. Do you want some tips? And then we, boom, do another one, right? Nice. And now the kids are like, oh, that, that was way better the second time. Yeah. Their brain is approaching it in a totally different way. And I go, I may have two more commercials ready for you. And they're like, oh, well, I'll keep watching commercials all day. Yeah. So we can slide that over. And then maybe next week I show them like a Pixar short that's only two minutes or three minutes, and we're still doing somebody wanted, but so then, but lots of rap and lots of feedback. And here's my favorite part. I don't have to grade it tonight because I graded it right now. And I love uh, Sarah's question here. How do you get teachers on board when they want to wait till the fall? Mm. Uh, there's a couple of ways. One is, one of my favorites is, as soon as state testing is over, your mad scientist lab opens for the spring, right? Heck, even during state testing, how many of us have this? Like in California, cast testing, we're going to do like two hours a day. And then the rest of the day, everything's just a mess, right? And some people are doing extra PE and some people are doing acrostic poems. They're just doing something. That's a perfect time to do wacky new things that you can roll yeah. out in the fall, correct? Or yep. if you wait until the last day of state testing, the cow's kind of out of the barn right now. It's a great time to do things over the next two to five weeks that you can test out for fall. And you might do it three times and then you go, Ooh, that's going to be a good one. That means mm -hmm. when you hit the fall, it's your second repetition, which means your skill will be yeah. higher as a teacher leader. All right. All right. Hold on. I'm address and then th Olga. this is the forgetting curve. On, John, yeah. I just want to address Olga's question. Olga says, how do I, apply this I want to point out edge of protocols are for any subject area any content area, any age group, right, John? It's yep. just a free yep. There's no limitation. And that's where the Venn diagram slide comes in in a minute. Yeah. What grade level is a Venn diagram? And so yeah. this is the forgetting curve. If you guys want to Google it, watch what happens on the fourth repetition there. And that's over weeks. This is research from the 1880s. But we don't talk about this in education anymore because I mean, very much I don't think the, the forgetting curve talk gets talked about in corporate training. It gets talked about in the military. It gets talked about in sports. It gets talked about in um, marketing. But we don't do it in the classroom because our perception is we're buried. And so if you think I'm going to give the kids four worksheets instead of one, you are yeah. not okay. 
And so that's where this quick repetition mindset, I've married up lots of feedback and quick reps without wrecking my nights and weekends doing planning. Yeah, yeah, good. It's also also called ipsative learning. Uh, If you have a friend who can't put their phone down when they're playing Bejeweled, that's ipsative learning. Um, If you're a Tetris person, that's ipsative learning. Notice that little feedback loop. So I do a thing, I get the score, I say to myself, one more rep. I do a score, one more rep. And I'm feeding back my own loop. We actually accidentally intercept that by telling kids, put it in the box on your way to recess. Because now there's no finality to their work. Right, right. So I I think I kind of already answered this one. Yeah. Um, Basically, edgy protocols are frameworks you can use over and over again. And they like the Venn diagram. It's it's a this is a picture of a Venn diagram of Venn diagrams. That's how agile it is, right? <laughs> and so, and, my brain. And and there's, yeah, and there's still Venn diagram day every day. I mean, every year it's celebrated. Mm-hmm. So again, like you said, Stephanie, what grade level I can do? What's a fish versus what's a, a sea mammal with first graders? Okay. I can do um, nouns and verbs or. Um, argument versus persuasion. Uh, I can I can move that all the way through to should I buy a Dodge Charger or, or a Tesla, right? Yeah. So it, there's no age limit on that, and that's part of the party with Edge of Protocols. Is it's it's good thinking, it's summarizing, it's feedback, it's it's yeah. creation. Okay. And I'll hand so, it over to Adam now. Well, yeah, yeah. Adam is going to show us some actual. Right. Yeah. Some yeah. ways that we can actually apply this. So what does that look like, Adam, if we're talking about the application of edu protocols and how this has transformed your teaching and student learning? Yeah. So um, this is one this is one example of one edu protocol. Yeah. So I shared yeah. with you guys earlier, like, you know, if, if we're gonna use Ed Puzzle, like sometimes I like if I'm gonna use Ed Puzzle or if I'm gonna use some other tech tool out there like Newzella or something. I'm going to try to pair up an edge of protocol with it any way that I can. Um, Cause I feel like I'm going to get more out of it that way. And so the examples that I have here are examples that I've done in years past where I paired up an edge of protocol with an ed puzzle. And so this number mania protocol here is uh, I, I'm giving the students um, and sometimes I have them share through a form. Sometimes I just have them, just find it on their own in a reading or in an ed puzzle. But I give each student a slide. I give them an ed puzzle video, maybe a reading. And I say, find five or six facts about this topic or find five or six facts to support this statement. Uh, so you can use it as like a textual evidence kind of thing. And so this one um, here, uh, I had the students watch a video on the Louisiana Purchase. And if you guys advance the slide, Yep. And so students listen to an Ed Puzzle video on the Louisiana Purchase. And I said, make sense of it with numbers. numbers. And, and so, so they, yeah, so they watch the video and design this slide in all of like 20 to 25 minutes in class. So, and that's it. So and, it's not, and I want to jump in here, Adam. So, it's not homework, yeah. right? It's not it's homework. A, it's not a project. It's now. It's not end of unit. Adam can do these to start the unit. This is actually like a pre-read clarification mm-hmm. behavior or activity. Here's another one. Yeah. Yes. And, and they're owning their learning. You're not lecturing at them. Yes. And so how has it transformed my classroom? You see it right here. I'm walking around. I'm talking to students. I'm asking them how they're doing. I'm asking if they need help. I'm showing them quick little things on there like, how to change the color uh, of the background, how to duplicate images and stuff. And so the creativity is through the roof. My relationship with my students is awesome. And like, like we said, like this is done in 20 minutes, not homework. And it's graded by the time I'm done. Yeah. That's your protocols are done. Yeah. Mostly right in class, right? These yep. are things you just, okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's, yeah. that's, well, that's and remember, the- that's that that's that feedback loop. If you're grading it at home, you're interdicting their ipsative fixation with how am I doing? Right, right. Okay, so this is that was the number mania edge protocol. Now you're yeah. going to tell us about sketch and tell. Awesome. And I yes, I love to pair up sketch and tell with an Ed Puzzle video. So the one source on this recipe card is that Ed Puzzle video. 
Then I give them one slide and students explain by drawing with Google Shapes and then they explain by writing. So no Googling images, no copying and pasting images. And, um, and so then I give them the source. I love to pair up sketch and tells with Ed Puzzles just as a, what's the most interesting thing that you learned at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. And I'll even link in an entire slide presentation at the end of the video and they can click it, go to it. And all the students are on the same slide deck doing their thing. Uh, but I am going to build off of what John said with the Ebbinghaus effect here. This is a student in September. And this was their, our first sketch and tell um, uh, example. And through feed through the feedback loop and constant practice, because again, we're not doing these like two or three times a school year. I'm going to do a sketch and tell a few times a week every single week so if we go from september and then the next slide yeah uh yeah to uh this is and this is the same kid right this is the yeah. same kid in what month this is the same kid and this is uh this was in march march or april wow. um and so we but this on is the power of reps and feedback yeah. he's telling yeah. a story yeah yes mm -hmm. and so um i mean obviously like I shared with them some, some simple tips and tricks, control D to duplicate shapes, how to change the color of shapes. And then we work on writing throughout the school year. That's the one skill we just constantly work on in my class. Amazing. And so again, like, and, and I will tell you, if you follow Adam on Twitter, if you're not on Twitter, that's okay. But you should at least go to his website, which is molersmusings.com or molersmusings.wordpress.com. Mm -hmm. And if yeah. you've got a and I, and I want to honor one of our people in the chat, Quill is, and I'm hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Quill uh, keeps asking really good questions. How does this work in a virtual course? Well, fun fact, Quill, when I was teaching sixth grade two years ago in the middle of um, of, of COVID, I was virtual, and this stuff works great because what happens is. When you're synchronous, and you, in, in, theoretically all classes have elements of synchronous at some point if you're K-8, right? Like you're going to meet with the kids a couple of times or you're going to Zoom live or whatever. But what you're going to do during those times is you're going to teach kids the patterns. And then you can say, listen to how the lesson planning works. Here's doing eight parts, pick your own picture. Mm -hmm. Here's a video or article to watch, make your own sketch and tell. Here's a, an, a, an article to read or a video to watch. Or you can plug these into uh, uh, an Ed Puzzle. So you can say, watch this video. Wait till, Quill, just wait till we get to claims, evidence, and reasoning, because I'm going to blow your mind in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that is, Matt, that's Adam's, the beautiful thing Adam does is he literally says, here was my week in school, in my social studies class. Here's everything we use. And so it's not like, hey, we're going to use Sketch and Tell one week. And then we'll forget about till next month. I mean, you're using these. It's iterative. You're constantly using those, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then right. to mix it up, like anyone wondering, like, if I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, how does that pique the interest of students? Well, here you go. I, it, sometimes I get the Play-Doh out and we change it to a mold and tell or I get my Legos out. We go build and tell. And, um, and, and so this is with popular sovereignty here. Kinesthetic uh, learning, right? Yes. Yep. Nice. Yep. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay, this I have to admit, Book of, Book of Kutch is one of my personal favorite edu protocols. Wait a minute, I got a shout out to Diane Mapes, one of our weird okay. friends from uh, Nevada, and Kathleen Diver. Kathleen's an awesome science teacher in Southern California. Hi John, guys. Okay, Book of Kutch. Book of Kutch, right? Yeah, I got uh, yeah, this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Way when I started teaching in '97, oh. yes, younger people. I taught last century. Um, the uh, the way that I got shown was okay. Give these kids a book, and then they take it home and read at night. And they they may or may not actually read, uh, but they sign these lit logs that say I read, and right. then um, give them a test on Friday, right? And 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 again, I'm looking at that as a, as an athletic point of view and i'm like let me get this straight i'm going to send the football home team and tell them to practice and then i'm going to meet them at the game and i'm going to hope it goes okay that is not pretty and even the motivated guys are not going to do well so 
Boca Cucha and Kathleen, and they lie. Um, <laughs> She's not wrong. Have, have, <laughs> and my co-author, Mar- my co-author Marlena made this one, and she took Pecha Cucha, which is actually a Japanese drinking game based on you do tw- 20 slides for 20 seconds each. It's very formal, oh, so 20 a, a slides, slide. 20 yeah. seconds. And Pecha Cucha means chit-chat or small talk. And so she said, well, what if, I, what if I put book in front of it? It's book talk. So it can be on any book. It can be one key skill or concept. Kids get three minutes to build a slide. They present to their table groups, and then they send their favorite ones to the front. Now, here's what's cool about this. What's my prep time? All I have to do is ask the question. What's my grading time? Like Adam said, I just got to walk around, and I'm checking boxes. I'm checking boxes. And then it's content-driven. So I, I did this one today with some kids in Southern California. Here's six types of conflict. We did a quick run through. These are six types of conflict. And then what I want you guys to do is pick one and give me a movie poster and a character. So character versus na- nature, Sharknado, nailed it. I'm building <laughs> academic vocabulary, but guys, how long is the lesson? Three minutes, right? Mm-hmm. And so and here's what character versus nature, Castaway. The dude's stuck on an island. Okay, now we're getting, we're building academic schema. Character versus nature, Jurassic Park. Character versus nature, Godzilla versus King Kong in there. So it's really quick with the kids. But then after they get on board, I can make it fancier. Oh, I cut off the fancy ones. I can do things like this. Give me three facts about the setting in Sharknado. Give me three facts about the protagonist. Give me three facts about the antagonist. Tell me three things about the main problem, how it develops. So think of it like a flash literature circle, right? So instead of 45 minutes pretending to work, three minutes at the end, slapping it together, you just, and I love this one, Stephanie, you'll love it. I used to tell my kids, hashtag panic now. And they would be like, what do you mean? And I go, well, if, if I... If I give you 40 minutes to do this, when will you really start working? And they're like, okay, about 30 minutes. And I go, okay, pretend like you only have 10 minutes left then. Like, just go ahead. Let's go straight to the panic mode. We'll skip the beginning part. (laughs) And and so it's really fun. You don't bring in an air horn to really set off panic (laughs) mode or anything like that? I just was I I may or may have a disco ball, and I may or may not play uh, uh, ACDC songs for those about to rock really loud. Uh, during the work session so imagine now we've done some training on this i can give kids i can give kids an ed puzzle and say solo book a kucha yeah give me three facts about the setting give me three facts about the character give me three facts now i've I've trained them either and to to, um to uh elo's point i've either trained them synchronously and now they can do it asynchronously or we can do it whole class and it's a huge it's just a super fun party and and the key though is fast feedback no grading later yeah yeah that's so brilliant oh and and i like how jonas along along the same lines jonas yeah and you guys have all these science class too it doesn't have to be for totally in a science class Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, I I wanted to keep these uh, in from Edpuzzle. If you look around, you guys, illusion, analogy, all those are in there. So Edpuzzle has training videos and then you can cut kids loose on their book. So imagine training the vocabulary with illusion and then saying, okay, this week's rock and roll book of Kucha is going to be about illusion. And, And then the other thing that this underlines is choice. I'll hear this from teachers a lot. We can't read that book. I don't have a test for it. We can't read that book. I haven't read that book. Bro, I do not care. I want to hear about illusion. It doesn't matter if I've read the book because it's all about explaining what you found. Watch what that does to my teacher brain, right? I've got all this capacity. And now I'm focused on standards instead of books, right? And so it's just, it's a really different approach that way. You're personalizing it for the kiddos. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. Not well, here's a good one. Cause... To share with you what they love. Oh, yeah. Shout, shout out to Maria Gallagher. I can tell by the people in this uh, audience here, we got some spicy people. But here's the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds? What are the odds that if your principal buys you a book, what are the odds you're going to read it? Like below 5%? 
What makes you think because I issue you a book as a as a twelve year old, you're gonna read it? Mm-hmm. Choice is everything in reading, and when you take Edger protocols as a mindset and Ed Puzzle as a tool, yeah, you can really give that choice in a way that's still eminently gradable and mm-hmm. easy feedback. So this is this is just mm-hmm. for our science people. Um, uh, Diane uh, is good with this in history, but. I did a thing a couple of years ago when I was teaching sixth grade full time. I realized that doing one thing at a, at a, at a time wasn't enough. So um, Kate, you said you're an ELA teacher. Yes. In, in my classroom, I, I do three genres at once. Three oh genres at God, once. Stop it. It's the triple genre challenge. Tell when they me get those more. Down, I go to five, <laughs> five genres Tell at once. More. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, look at Trina. She said, see, she's blazing through her class. A 90-minute class will terrify a lot of lecture-based teachers because that is a lot of talking, right? Mm-hmm. And Trina's like, no, nope. the kids fly right through. So anyways, the triple genre challenge goes like this. It may have been April, and I may have been in a staff meeting at which my principal may have said, how is it going with genres? And I may have said, oh, oh, dear, I haven't done anything yet with genres. <laughs> <laughs> so, there. uh Yeah. And my class was really, they were not good at sentences and paragraphs. So I really focused on that. But then what I did was I flipped them and I said, look, we got about nine weeks of school left and I can do this, which is what a classic teacher would do. Two weeks of one genre, two weeks of another genre, two weeks of another genre, two weeks of another genre. And then they would be bad at all of them. (laughs) So what I did was I said, we're going to do one a day every week. So Monday was poetry, Tuesday was narrative, Wednesday was argumentative, Thursday was persuasive. And then we packaged it even tighter into this. Look at this beast. We play a little video. There's a commercial. It's actually, a, I think it's a Buick commercial. And we're going to give you guys the slides. But imagine this. Imagine this. You play a commercial where this girl says, I think my dad's an alien. And look at the evidence. He has a spaceship. No, it's his car. He speaks a, dang, a, a different language. No, he was gargling. He dresses differently. That's his biking outfit. So you're walking kids through claims and evidence with pop culture. Okay, I am freaking out because, again, as I was a high school English teacher too, and the time I spent trying to get kids to write a persuasive essay, and they were also focused on the thesis, and they were also focused on the transitions and the paragraphs, and oh my God, here you go, evidence, boom. Then they, it just almost boom, writes boom, itself. Boom. This is, I'd always say, yep. show me the evidence, show me the evidence. And oh my God, there it is. Mm-hmm. Well, and the time's been on, so, wait, what word goes at the start of a counterclaim or a rebuttal? Yes. Like, so they're not really yeah. totally understanding it, just what word goes there. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And yeah. then this is where I'm going to, this is where I'm going to blow your minds right now. This is being done by a science teacher Stop because it. she's, she's prepping for claims, evidence, reasoning for science but she's using TV commercials to get them there. So that's yeah. Ariana Hernandez, who's amazing. Yeah. And so, Love. so because of the nature of the slides, this video won't play, but you guys, we're going to share the slides at the end. You'll be able to grab this video out of the slides. And this guy looks a little angry, but he's not, he's just serious. Um, he <laughs> reads Adam. I think I sent this one to you and I don't think, I don't know if you listened to it yet, but this guy reads a letter it. from Will. He, ha- he reads a letter from William Tecumseh Sherman four months before the beginning of the world of the Civil War. And this is how the letter goes, you guys. It's C-E-R. And he goes like this. You people in the South, you have no idea what you're doing. War is a horrible, terrible thing, and you will pay. Mm. Boom. Claim. Yeah. Evidence. You people. You the South cannot make locomotives. The South can barely make cloth. The South cannot make weapons on your own. You have to buy your weapons. Evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Reasoning yeah. is coming up. So imagine dropping this into an Ed puzzle and you stop the kids and go, what's his claim? Boom. Yeah. Give me three evidences. What's okay. his reasoning? And he wraps up basically by saying, you don't, you're not military people. You think you want a war. You don't want a war. I have told you the reasons you're going to lose the war. He mapped yeah. out the entire civil war six months before it started. It's like the claims evidence reasoning of the century. So nice. you guys can get that video, suck it into Ed puzzle. And all you got to do for the kids is say, what are his claims? What's his evidence? What is his reason? It's crazy good. Crazy good. Because it's the time that you're putting in 
is so low, mm -hmm. but the thinking, the work that the kids mm -hmm. have to do, it's very heavy on their part. They're showing real thinking right. instead of filler. You right? they're right. working, yeah. uh -huh. they're doing the work, right? They're demonstrating <laughs> the work. And that's the thing. You have, changed, yeah. you have changed the whole workflow for teachers. It's not me panicking yeah. on a Sunday night. I've got to get the lecture notes. I've got to get the worksheets. I've yeah. got to get the digital notebooks together. I've got to get the, well, it is. Here's no, I don't, I, I don't got to do nothing. Here's I can literally plan my day between my car door and my classroom door. <laughs> That's what edge protocols do. I can literally slam my door. I can walk into my classroom and go, we're going to do a triple challenge. I got this video from TikTok Sunday. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to do an eight parts of speech. I got a hilarious squirrel video. Look at this spicy teacher, Marie. Like I can literally plan my class between my car door and my classroom door. Adam, I yeah. cut you out there. Jump in on that. I was going to say, you know, described because... me accurately. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are definitely our Valentines. You're, I think you're our audience's Valentines too. And Maria, just to, for those of you who are new to this, don't worry. We're going to share out all of the information so at the end here, so, you know, just make sure so that you can go ahead and find these templates and get them yourself. So can I right. just say, can I throw in one more thing about the three times CER? Yeah. Sorry. Um, this is what I love about it as a history teacher. So I like to pair these up with a primary source. And if I just ran the old primary source lessons from the side I get them oh. from, I, they're just it's writing. On one, wheels. They're, yeah, they're writing one claim, right? With this. I get them writing three claims yeah. and writing evidence three times and writing reasoning three times. So there's that repetition Ebbinghaus effect. Piece. And I'm literally right. walking around by grading, just peeking over their shoulders. You guys, if you've been teaching more than two weeks, you know, which kids aren't going to work. So that's the people <laughs> yeah. I stand by. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> well, Stephanie and Kate were in my class. I only need to look at their paper for eight seconds. Looks good. You guys do that tomorrow. Meanwhile, I'm standing by Adam. Adam, put the chili away, dude. <laughs> um, so let's talk about how to get started. And we've seen people in the comments. I think thin slides, right, Adam? Thin slides is probably the easiest way to get started with an edge protocol. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. Start okay. with a fast and curious. Okay, edge fast protocol. and curious. And I know. Right. I see, uh, my my buddy Diane Mapes in here. She would say that is the gateway to the rest of the protocols. Um, it's our so, entry level drug. So, so, and, and here's a true example from today. I'm going to share a real live example from my most challenging class. All right. My most challenging class today. I had them make their own gim kit today. Uh, they took the gim kit for four minutes. Okay. And it's just the repetition piece. And they answered 300 and I'm trying to get the math right. 370 questions in four minutes, everybody. And then we took it again. But this time, and I, and I took a little piece from John from yesterday in our discussion, I had half the class close their Chromebooks and they partnered up on the GIM kit for the second round. And I lowered it down to three minutes and I said, here's the goal, answer more than 370 questions and get a higher class percentage. But they missed it by five questions. And you know what they did? My most challenging class, these kids, they, they never want to do anything. At least that's what other people would say about it. <laughs> they went, can we do it again? Let's do it again. Let's go. Let's do it again. And I said, okay. I don't know. It's going to take me forever to grade. Yeah. <laughs> and we did it again, and they knocked it out of the park. They answered 470 questions, and they wow. raised their class percentage up to an 86% from a 67% when we started. So, and they were excited to do it, but that's the fast and curious gets them, just gets any teacher going, gets the students going, and then you can throw in a thin slide, use the sketch and tell that we showed earlier. The, the, these are things you can do tomorrow. If anyone has never done these, yeah. you can do these tomorrow and get your class just rocking and rolling. So can you, I kind of want to be in your class right now. Let's just, let's ditch this and go to your class. <laughs> <laughs> the door is always open to 505. So. Yeah. So again, it, 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 this is all, again, still new to you. I do encourage you uh, to buy the book because the book walks you through step-by-step step each chapter. Each chapter is like, again, as short as an edge protocol. 
and it gives you the layout and a plan for it. Um, if you search the Edu Protocols hashtag on Twitter, your people are sharing and generous. I made a whole bunch. We're going to share like some templates. I used to make those, but um, yeah, they're just you know. I think there's some great ways. Well, and know, and Odette had a, a really Odette had a really good question. Can you show me a sample with a lot of slides? I am not going to do that because that is your Sunday disappearing. That's your Friday night disappearing. Mm -hmm. That's kids sitting and watching for hours. So what I'm going to do, though, to answer your question in another way, Odette, is I'm going to stack up four or five protocols. So I might do a, a GIM kit or a Blook it for four minutes with 20 questions. I might coach the kids for one minute and then play again for four minutes, total of nine minutes. I might come out of that and I might do a thin slide, one picture, one word, like what Adam said. It's very elegant. What's the number one thing you is your takeaway? I might come out of that and say, here's an article from Scientific American or History.com or Wikipedia. I need five facts about this subject. I might show them a Civil War video about General Sherman. So I'm, I'm not going to build a 60-slide deck or a 30-slide deck. I'm not going to spend much time talking. Um, and maybe this is my, one of my favorite things that I realized in the last six months. When I started teaching, I thought I needed to be Robin Williams or Meryl Streep or George Clooney. I thought I needed to drive the class. And I thought the power of my persona was what made the class work. Mm -hmm. And I realized a few months ago that I really want to be more like Hugh Jackman in The Greatest Showman. I don't have any actual skills. I'm not the clowns. I'm not the... My job is to go, and Adam's really good at this. Look, a gim kit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's do an ed puzzle. Uh, my personality is not driving the lesson. I'm lining yeah. up a bunch of activities that they don't hate. And then I'm tricking them into doing the activities over and over again because they're getting immediate feedback. And yeah. then there's a collaborative piece and a creative piece that makes it really susceptible to their brains. Yeah. Six, yeah. seventh, eighth graders want to talk. So, but the trick is panic. Now you've got a minute to help each other. You've got two minutes to help each other. You've got 10 minutes to make a slide deck amongst the five of you. So it's quick turnaround. And when they screwed up, I just laugh at them and go, we're going to do it again tomorrow. Yeah. And then over a few days, they get better and better. Yeah. Um, can you show us a thin slide? Because I think, do we have a thin slide example, you guys? Yeah, well, I sure do. This is a, a thin one. slide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one picture, one word. You're good to go. So um, like Odette's a French teacher, and I could do this. Ready? I, now, okay. a thin slide uh, for the background is um, a thin slide is basically, if you guys remember KWL charts, remember KWLs? What do you want to know? What do you want to learn? Uh, you know, all those kinds of things. Well, they move too slow and they depend on the teacher to make the kids listen. And then I pull popsicle sticks to make them answer. So take the KWL mindset upset, go like this, one slide. And I'm going to do this for Odette. One slide, one picture. Today's word is accoutrement. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to use Google Images to find pictures of accoutrement. And then you get three minutes for one picture, one slide. And then I go like this. Everybody's going to say the word, syllabicate it, and share for a maximum of four seconds. What do you think accoutrement are? And boom, that's a five-minute lesson. This is amazing. Thank so that's you. basically I mean, a thin yeah. slide. One word or phrase, one picture, Google images are open, and then everybody, this is the key though, everybody's going to share, not present, share for about four seconds. And they can do a claim evidence or reasoning, or they can tell me what they think it is now that they've seen it. Good to go. I guarantee you, every kid will go home tonight at dinner and go, mother, I love our accoutrement for dinner. It's fabulous. <laughs> well, I love what Trina said. All of this is so fast moving. Our students are so yeah. used to a world where everything is fast paced and things become mm -hmm. outdated so quickly. And so they're excited to learn in these very short bursts. It's kind of like what Adam was saying, begging to answer more of these questions. Yeah. Because it, it's not stale. They're moving so quickly through it, but they're retaining right. it because they're doing meaningful things with it. 
Yeah. Well, 90%. Yes. And, what, and then it's constantly getting better, constantly getting, getting better. Yeah. And, and people say, well, don't they get bored with this? Are they getting bored with freaking Roblox? Are they getting yeah. bored with Minecraft? Are they getting bored with Pokemon cards? Yeah. The difference is the live feedback and the creativity. And then great question from Rachel Sage. How do yes. I have them share? There's a couple of ways. Now we're doing Ed Puzzle right now. So watch this. I go, somebody wanted, but so then Ed Puzzle allows me to show the answers. Am I right? So yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yes. What, how'd you guys do? Well, that was horrible. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. <laughs> right. Okay. Or do you do you make I a slide do... deck? Do you make a slide deck and assign like a big Google slide deck and then assign yeah. each student a slide? We're like, actually getting T-shirts made that say "Edge Protocols." It depends. So there's no <laughs> one answer. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'll make a mass slide deck, and everybody's job is to paste one slide in. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I'll put them in pairs like for a cyber sandwich and they work in pairs and then the pair shares it to me and I present it off my screen because I don't have time for kids to walk to the front of the room and back. Yeah. It's not that I wouldn't like them to do that. I'm just not going to burn 40 seconds yeah. on every pair making their way to the front and back room. Mm -hmm. The math yeah. is bad. 40 seconds per pair. That's, that's 15 minutes of just walking. We don't got time for that. So yeah. I will do... Yeah. I can do Nearpod, I can do Pear Deck, I can do Microsoft Slides. With Microsoft, you're going to want to use your PowerPoint online, your 360. You're not going to want to – no more shit sending attachments to people. Um, and so they can work in a mass deck. They can work in pairs. They can – I can read through their answers in Edpuzzle. Um, there, there's about a dozen different ways on it, but it depends. Okay. All right. Um, I do. I, I, we're going to have time for like one more question before we have to start wrapping it up, guys, because we could go on this forever. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are so many ways to do these different things. Um, thank you. Yes. So there are free templates. So we can, we can take one more question if someone wants to add one there. Um, Eduprotocols.com. And everything you need to know is there, right? You've got your books, where to buy mm -hmm. your books. Um, you've got free templates, but you do ask that people sign up for a membership, but it's a free membership at eduprotocols.com, right? Yeah. It's just so we can email them cool stuff when we see it. So, yeah. And, and then the we there. recently started a, subs yeah. And there's a, a lot of the classic templates are there. You can just literally go on Twitter and put in hashtag sketch and tell, hashtag thin slides, hashtag number mania. You'll see people sharing like crazy. And then we're doing a new thing where we have pro level support at Edge Protocols Plus. So we have weekly, I mean, monthly shows with people like Adam and all the authors. And there's classes you can take and things like that. Yeah. And then uh, another awesome thing is the Edge Protocols community on Facebook. We're right up to almost 8,000 teachers in uh, two years. And you can literally go in there and people do this about three or four times a week. Help. I just got moved from fourth grade to fifth grade. I got nothing. And people are like, I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. And they'll go in there and they'll say, I'm new to edge of protocols. What do I do? And um, they have self named it. I don't run this. I'm just a, yeah. a, a, a person in it. Um, they have named it the friendliest place on the internet. So um, that's Aww. really cool. And then, okay, you know, have, our have, real big motto quick, is. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. We just have a quick question too. Well, Trina, come at us. Where do I find the new ones? Um, they're talking about all the new ones. There were, Adam, how many Wicked Hydra posts in the last week on Facebook? 10, 12? I, I was going to say like 100, but that, I think that's an exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's doing the Wicked Hydra. Let's, we'll split the difference 30 or 40. There um, you go. Uh, Repuzzler, Wicked Hydra. The new ones um, are getting shared really actively on that, that Facebook page. So jump into that Facebook page. Okay, good. You're good. Good. Yep. Go over That's there and join the wonderful community. Adam, what do you want to promote? What do you got going on? Uh, well, uh, there's going to be a new blog post coming out tomorrow. Okay. Heck yes. Um, and uh, it's uh, uh, molersmusings.wordpress.com or just go to Google, type in Molars Musings. You'll find it. Um, I'm going to be at the Ohio EdTech Conference next Wednesday Me too. Uh, on February 15th. Scott and I, my co-author Scott Petrie and I have our live show on Edge of Protocols Plus 
Uh, we're going to be focused on thin slides, and we're going to have Ben Harrington from Hudson, Ohio, a fellow middle school teacher, uh, joining us. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is going on. Oh, I'm I'm uh, doing some PD up in Hamilton City Schools for my buddy Corbin. Uh, doing some protocols up there next Friday. So, got a lot of stuff. I have a jam packed. Excellent. Excellent. And not watching the Super Bowl. I am <laughs> not watching the Super Bowl. Right there. You right heard there. it here <laughs> first, Bengals <laughs> fans. <laughs> oh goodness. Adam and I are still not okay. Bitter. That's <laughs> oh, bitter. Is it, is it bad? Is it? Is, is it bad to call it the Burrow Bowl? Is that bad? Next year, you'll call it that. All right. <laughs> All right. Wait, well, wait, um, what, do we get to, what do we have to share out, Kate? Uh, okay. So we have well, a Don't ton forget, of I've got a, I sent them the slides if you want to drop those into the chat. You okay. guys have a link to all the slides you could just show. We will do that. Thank, Thank you. you. So we have a ton of different things tonight, and we have some goodies for you guys. So go ahead and grab a pen, grab your phone to make notes, whatever you need. You don't want to miss a thing, especially the link to grab your certification of attendance for joining us tonight. So first, here's the link to access all the great ideas we discussed tonight. You can scan the QR code or click the link that Maho is going to drop in the chat. Visit all things Edu Protocols, John, Adam, and Edpuzzle related, including a link to create an Edpuzzle account if you don't already have one. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's, if you want to download that bookmark it and you'll have everything we talked about, every way to get in touch with everybody. Hey, Maho, come join us, by the way. I miss your face. Um, <laughs> I know. Where's your, where's your official stand-up comedian? Isn't that I her role? <laughs> <laughs> What's um, that? What are our upcoming events happening? Okay. Yes. So we've got international ed tech presenter, Leslie Fisher. Ooh. She is fresh from FETC and TCA. She's sharing her presentation, Ed Puzzle Hacks You Didn't Know, Thursday, February 23rd, 7 p.m. Eastern in Twitter spaces. All you got to do is click them, you know, at go on Twitter at 7 p.m. You'll see, you know, the little blue or the purple bar. You click the microphone from your Twitter homepage at that time to join us and listen and chat in March. If you are interested in upgrading, so speaking of feedback, if you're interested in upgrading and simplifying your rubric, shifting the purpose of assessment to one that tracks progression and growth over time, mm -hmm. and then visualizes the growth for the students, we are chatting with Greg Kulawik. Mm -hmm. He's an educator, and he has created something called the visual rubric. So no more of those 25 squares. We're going to create a visual oh, rubric no. with him. Yeah, um, that happens Thursday, March 9th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can register now for this event. Uh, we do have a link for it. Maho is going to drop that in the chat. Thank you, Maho. Also, it's going to be on our socials, so you're not going to miss out. Um, it'll definitely out. sign up for it because, y'all, we don't need those big rubrics. No. <laughs> no. It's also no. it's conference season, and we want to see you. So if you're planning to attend IdeaCon or Spring Q, and you want to share with other educators how you're using Edpuzzle, we want to connect with you. Um, we would love for you to host a brief demo at our booth or just stop by and let us celebrate you. So just slide into our DMs and we'll make sure to hook you up with everything you need. Or you can send an email to conference at edpuzzle.com. Again, that's conferences at edpuzzle.com. That's also in the chat. Yeah. Also, make sure you have subscribed to our Edpuzzle YouTube channel to get notified when all of our Edpuzzle live <laughs> events drop and watch our past live events. Why yes. not even consider sharing some of our live events at your next staff meeting or professional development day? Speaking of and puzzle lives, Maho, what do you have going on on the LATAM side of the world? So if you're a Spanish speaking teacher and you're interested in learning more uh, using Edpuzzle, we're gonna have this live event in February and it's about the importance of social emotional education in students. So if you want to join us, you are completely welcome. I will be posting the registration link in our so in our Spanish social media. If you don't follow follow us yet, you can follow at Puzzle in Spanish at at Puzzle underscore es. So uh, I will Ma Maho, I have a special treat for you. The Spanish version of Edu Protocols book should be dropping at the end of March. 
I mean, you. Uh, we should get in contact, John, because I'm really interested in that and sharing that with all the Spanish-speaking teachers that need help. Uh, I mean, they need all the help we can give them. So, yeah, that's going to yeah. be great. Thank you. And I hope to see a lot of teachers that are in the U.S. and speak Spanish. Or if you don't speak Spanish, don't worry. I can definitely, I mean, I can definitely help you. Um, <laughs> I'm a helper. So yeah, if you want to join it. us, I will be so glad to see you there. We um, would also oh, you know what I feel badly. The people who are watching us from LinkedIn um are asking yeah. about the links. They're asking about the links. What uh all, all the links that we're sharing in our YouTube channel right now. Oh well. I, I can share them at the end. So okay. let me push this, and I promise I will uh, share them in the links. Uh, from so you're going to have everything I'm sharing right now. Don't worry. Maho's a fixer. This is exactly <laughs> what we meant. She fixes everything. You thought we were kidding. It's just like it's just like Taylor Swift. Oh. And the eggs. It's okay. just like that. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the big news. That Here's what you've been waiting for, too. So Kate's got some. Oh, right. Energy. We have two. Valentine's Day gifts for you because you know we had to. We love you. One, Ed Puzzle swag, and two, a gift of attendance. There are two separate forms to complete. Maho's going to drop those in the chat. Again, if you're on LinkedIn, she's going to make sure you get those in the LinkedIn comments. So stay tuned for those. Or if you're impatient, just go ahead and head over to our YouTube. It's already there. Make sure to fill both out. You'll want to do that pretty quickly. Both links close at 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. So make sure you click on those now to claim your swag and your certificate of attendance. Yeah. So that those close at 10. And if you're, you got to watch it tonight here. Okay. I think that's it, right? We're all done. Ooh, this was never be sure. We might just want to hang out a little longer. I can hang out with you guys forever. Help our people. Oh. <laughs> As you all go out into the world, implementing the ideas you learned here tonight and do it, please. Share it, post it, hashtag edu. And if you're still shy, I'll do free lifetime tech support. Just email me. I will get you over the top. Not a problem. Oh, there you go. You heard oh. it here. Oh, look at the little things. So yes, Adam, John, Kate, Maho, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the information, gentlemen. Ladies, thank you for the support. You are my Valentines. Aww. Thank you to our educators using Edpuzzle. I think I can put on my Valentines. Um, thank you for making learning more engaging and fun for our kiddos. I hope to see you at our Twitter Spaces event in two weeks. I'm going to be at OETC and OHIO next week. So come yes. say hi. All right. And all of you, please, we love you. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. We love you. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye. 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 Bye.